Welcome back. In this section, we will learn about broken authentication and session management. What is broken authentication and session management vulnerability? It is the one of the top 10 OWASP vulnerabilities. Normally, developers doesn't concentrate much on how users' session is being managed. This negligence results into introducing broken authentication and session management vulnerabilities. In the web applications, which is quite a bit hard for developers to detect by themselves. Making use of this vulnerability, an attacker can hijack a session, gain authorized access to the system, which allows disclosures and modification of unauthorized information. The sessions can be hijacked using stolen cookies or sessions using XSS, which means cross-site scripting. The websites usually create a session cookie and session ID for each valid session and these cookies contain sensitive data like username and passwords. So when the session is ended either by logout or browser closed unexpectedly, these cookies should be invalidated. Means for each session, there should be a new cookie. If the cookies are not invalidated, the sensitive data will exist in the system. For example, a user using a public computer in college or office, the cookies of vulnerable sites sits on the system and exposed to the attacker. An attacker uses the same public computer after some time, the sensitive data is compromised. In the same way, a user using a computer in the public, instead of logging off, he closes the browser unexpectedly. An attacker uses the same system. When browsers the same vulnerable site, the previous session of the victim will be opened. The attacker can do whatever he wants to do from stealing profile information, bank information, and etc. A check should be done to find the strength of the authentication and session management. Keys, session tokens, cookies, should be implemented properly without compromising passwords. Let's see what are those mistakes for broken authentication and session management. Session IDs exposed on URL can lead to session fixation attack. Basically developers add session IDs with a values in the URL. And session IDs, same before and after login and logout. Session timeouts are not implemented correctly. Application is assigning same session ID for each new session. Authentication parts of the application are protected using SSL and passwords are stored in hashed or interpret format. The sessions can be reused by a low privileged user. Okay, in the next lecture, we will learn lab demonstrations on vulnerabilities. Thank you. See you in next lecture. Welcome back. In this video lecture, we will see brute force attack on login page. Authentication lies at the heart of an application's protection against unauthorized access. Let's demonstrate a technique to bypass authentication using a simulated login page from DVWA. We are using a token from DVWA web application project. Before going to start, first ensure that BUP is correctly configured with your browser. Here I am using Firefox browser. And visit the login page of application. You are testing your browser. Here you can see that DVWA brute force vulnerable page. In the Burpsuit proxy intercept tab, click on it. You can see that intercept is on. Back to our browser, enter some random details in the login page. And submit the request. 
Here you can see that the captured request can be viewed in the proxy intercept tab. Right click on the request to bring up the context menu. Then click on send to intruder. You can also send request to the intruder via context menu in any location where HTTP requests are shown such as sitemap or proxy history. Now open up the intruder Positions tab. Here I am clearing the preset payload positions by using the clear button on the right of the request editor. Change the attack to cluster bomb using the attack tab drop down menu. Add username and password parameter values as positions and using the add button. Go to the payloads tab. Now in the payload settings, ensure payload set is 1 and payload type is set to simple list. In the payload options settings, enter some possible usernames. Next in the payload sets options, change payload set to 2. Ok, in the payload options settings, Enter some possible passwords. You can also use possible password list. Finally, click the start attack button. Brute force attack is started here. In the intruder attack window, you can sort the results using the column headers. Let's sort by length and see the login status. Here you can see that only one result length is referred. That's cool. Let's open as render window. Here you can see that login is successful by payload. 1 username as admin and payload 2 password as password. Ok that's all about brute force attack. See you in next class. Welcome back. In this lecture we will see how to bypass login page using SQL injection. Attacker can also try to inject its own special SQL query on inside the login page in order to bypass the login page because what happen is sometime Login pages are also vulnerable to SQL injection. If the login page is vulnerable to SQL injection, then an attacker can easily bypass the authentication mechanism. Now let's see how we can do login page SQL injection. Now let's perform SQL injection on login pages. Here you can see that BWAP web application. So this is the application which we have used while testing SQL injection. If I just go here you will see a login pages. Let's open up login page. Hit hack button to submit. Here is the login page is vulnerable to SQL injection. Here you can see that we are not logged in. Let's try another random credentials and let's see whether it works or not. Here you can see that it has displayed wrong username or a password. Let's see the query inside the PHP file. We can see the query here. Copy it up and paste it here. Here you can see that this is the query which is executing at the backend. Select star from user where name is admin123 and password is 12345. Which means it's doing a comparison between the user supplied input or between the data which is present in the database. 
Now in order to bypass this login page, what we can do is we can do a small trick in order to inject some SQL payload to server application confused. So what we can do is here is the place of username. So if I just write here admin123 single quote or 1 equals to 1 it means we are closing this field name by just here admin123 and I am adding an another condition that is 1 equals to 1 so as we all know that 1 equals to 1 and it's a universal truth. This will remain true and by adding our operator this will not matter that whether this part should be true or not. If this is true or condition will become true. So in the place of password I just add here something admin or 1 equals to 1 and in the place of name. Ok, our query is ready. Select star from user where name is admin123, ok, or 1 equals to 1. If this will not true, then this will be true and the password should be password. This will not true, this part will always true. 1 equals to 1. Let's try to add this our input. So one admin one to three single quote or one equals to one copied up, paste it here. Click on submit. Here we are. We are successfully able to logged in and you can see that our injected query which is executed at the backend. Ok, so this was a small example that how we can bypass login pages using SQL injection. Ok, that's it in this lecture. Thank you and see you in next lecture. Welcome back to our video lecture. In this video lecture, we will learn how to prevent broken authentication and session management vulnerability. Where possible, implement multi-factor authentication to prevent automated credential stuffing, brute force and stolen credential reuse attack. Don't deploy with any default credentials, particularly for admin users. Implement weak password checks, testing on new or Changed passwords against a list of top 10,000 worst passwords. Align password length, complexity, rotation policies. Ensure registration, credential recovery and API pathways are hardened against account enumeration attacks by using the same messages for all the outcomes. Limit delay failed login attempts, log all the failures and Alert administrators when credential stuffing, brute force or other attacks must be detected. Use a server-side secure and built-in session manager that generates new random session ID with high entropy after login. Session ID should not be in the URL. Be safe, securely stored and invalidated after logout and idle. Okay. That's it in this lecture. See you in next lecture.